All right, we're going to be going into a palpation of the suboccipitals in this video. This is going to be, again, the best I can do under the circumstances that they're extremely deep in the back of the neck and head here. So first of all, we're going to kind of palpate into the back of the head and landmark where the occiput is versus kind of the drop off where our cervical vertebra number one would be. And then the first spinous process that we feel in the back of the head right here is C2. So we have four muscles that are typically referred to as the suboccipitals sitting in the space between the cervical two and the base of the occiput. So again, very tiny space and they're very deep within here. So this is more almost like a landmarking than it is gonna be doing an exact palpation. Their muscles are deep to both trapezius and a very large semispinalis capitis muscle, which is sitting in here. So again, to even get close to those suboccipitals, you'd have to go through a quite a thick posterior neck muscle. So again, just communicating some information. So our first one, rectus capitis posterior minor, is gonna be coming off of the posterior tubercle of the first cervical vertebrae, which is also known as the atlas. So again, I'm not really able to feel that, but I'm just central above the C2, below the occiput, and it's gonna be going forward onto the nuchal line, however, there's three nuchal lines on the back of the occiput, so this is the smallest, or sorry, the most inferior, the inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone. So again, not really palpating it, but from posterior tubercle towards occiput, this would be rectus capitis posterior minor. A little bit below that, coming off of the spinous process of cervical two, and again, inserting onto that same inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone, a little bit more lateral, is rectus capitis posterior major. So you have minor and we have major coming off of their respected bones, superior and lateral. And then we're gonna be having two more. So this one here is obliquus capitis inferior, which also comes off of the spinous process of cervical two and heads very lateral onto the posterior aspect of the transverse process of C1. So more out in this direction. Again, really deep in here underneath a bunch of muscle tissue. So you're not really gonna be able to palpate that too well. And from the transverse process of the cervical one heading up again towards our inferior nuchal line is gonna be obliquus capitis superior. So we have four suboccipital muscles in the posterior aspect of the neck, three of them inserting along the inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone, and one of them onto the TVP of C1. Again, not really palpable, but a lot of people like to do what's called a suboccipital release, um, so some pressure in the area. These muscles are responsible for doing what is known as, as a group capital extension, which is basically just rolling the head posteriorly. When I turn him over in the next section of this video, uh, I'll show you exactly what that is. And then again, if you're unilaterally activating some of them, they can create some rotation of the atlantoaxial joint as they're basically rotating cervical one on C2. Um, so again, really tight space, not a lot to identify exactly. So in a second here, we'll be turning him over into supine and we will show you the manual muscle test and actions. All right, so now that we have our body into supine position, again, I'm just gonna go through a little bit of that palpation one more time, because this is often the position that you'll be palpating and treating the suboccipitals, quote unquote, or really those deep posterior neck muscles. So I have the spinous process of his cervical two, just rotate his head away a little bit, and then I get to have that nice soft squishy space where cervical one is, and then I have the base of the occiput. So oftentimes people will push their fingers into this location, which is what I'm gonna do right now, keeping my fingers in a nice straight joint here, and you can load some pressure into that semispinalis capitis and the suboccipital region. And to activate, to try and get these muscles to fire, you're actually just gonna have your person gently look with their eyeballs up towards you, which is then gonna go into exactly that capital extension. Perfect, and you can tuck your head back down again. So just engaging some of those posterior neck muscles, focusing on capital extension, and that's gonna help you prove that you're in the right area. So right in this space, right in here, again, you're not really gonna be able to identify and palpate one at a time, but it's still a nice release for the back of a person's head. Okay, so we're gonna be going into the manual muscle test. And for the purpose of this video, we're really just going to focus on a single action of capital extension as a group for all the suboccipitals. 
So I'm just gonna show my partner the action. And basically what he's gonna do, without lifting his head up or really pushing into the table too much, he's just gonna roll his head back, which means they're looking up towards you. And you can even see that in the sheet, just fold it up nicely there. So let's have him do that again. So without going into too much other action, we're looking for just that capital extension. So in this case, I'm actually just gonna pick up his head and allow him to slide in my hands instead of rolling the sheet. Perfect, and let's come back down. So there is the active range of motion of capital extension. There's a little bit of cervical in there, but that's okay. So I'm going to then cup my hand on the occiput with one hand. And with my other hand, I'm just gonna place it on the frontal bone and on the forehead here. Please just take caution, not putting your fingers down over top of their eyes. The last thing you wanna do is poke your partner in the eye. So instead, I like to turn my hand to the side. So he's going to go into that action a little bit. Perfect, and hold there. And I'm gonna, with one hand, roll forward, pushing on the frontal bone. And with my other hand, I'm gonna be pulling on the occiput. So I have two hand resistance trying to roll his head down. Three, two, one, a nice strong five second contraction there. So we're gonna bring him back to a neutral position and then I'm gonna go ahead and allow him to win. So he's gonna push up into my resistance hands. Push, 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 good. And that completes the motion. So there's the active break and concentric. And we're just gonna go into a lengthening. So similar hand positioning. Oftentimes we just simply refer to this as the double chin, but I'm going to tuck his chin down and push his head into some slight extension here. Okay, so again, pull up with your occiput hand and push forward the forehead on frontal bone hand and just double chin into that section, giving a nice length. So oftentimes people with head forward posture, I'll just imitate that for a second, have their head forward in here, and that really does bring the head into some capital extension. So sometimes a really nice, good exercise and stretch for them is to try to tuck their chin and elongate some of those suboccipitals and even place a little pillow underneath the back of their head just to hold their head up. So you can start to lengthen these often really tight muscles in the back of the head. All right, that's gonna conclude our palpation, manual muscle test, and length for the suboccipitals.